I'm going to work that hard in the offseason and put that much in the football. I want to be the best. There is no scheme that you can win a national championship. You have simply got to take them on one at a time. And we might as well find out the first ball game whether we are contenders or pretenders. We don't have concern with coming in second or third. We want it all. We want the ring this year. WCTV Sports presents Making Magic, the Knowles in 91. Now, from the Magic Kingdom of Disneyland, here is WCTV Sports Director Scott Atwell. Disneyland. If you've seen the commercials following the Super Bowl, you know this is where athletes come when their successful seasons have come to an end. By opening up in the second annual Disneyland Pigskin Classic, Florida State's doing it in reverse, hoping all the while for the same end result. So join us as we travel through this kingdom to see if the Seminoles have the magic to rule the castle. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Wild West indeed, they're already saying this could be the best Florida State defense ever. Certainly it's the quickest. Start with the corners where both Terrell Buckley and Errol McCorby have 4-4 speed in the 40. That spells out bad news for opposing receivers. McCorby and Buckley will win most shootouts in a man-to-man -man coverage. Yeah, I want to win at Thorpe. I want to be a first-team All-American. I want to lead the nation in interception and punt returns and just play well. Isn't that a lot to ask? No, nah, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Speed's not exclusive to the backs. Florida State's linebackers can turn up the juice. Howard Dinkins has been clocked at 4-5. Kirk Carruthers, Marvin Jones turn in a 4-6. And we're not finished yet. Imagine, if you will, 4-6 speed coming at you in the form of 275-pound Dan Footman. He's bigger than Lawrence Taylor. He's almost 6'5", and he runs awfully fast. If he performs and if he can stay healthy, boy, he, he is going to add something really, really to us. Footman, a pass-rushing specialist, that is, until the coaching staff feels comfortable that he's recovered from surgery on his knee. If he doesn't catch him, look out for tackle Carl Simpson, who's just an eyelash behind Footman when it comes to foot speed. I think the potential of this defense is outstanding. And our intensity is starting to pick up. And if we can get that, uh, uh, we've got a chance of having a real good defense. Andrews has hit the bonanza. Undoubtedly, this is the most talented bunch of linebackers ever to wear the garnet and gold. Start with sophomore Marvin Jones. The 222-pounder led the team in tackles as the freshman. He says he's never even heard of the term sophomore jinx. You don't be, you know, satisfied with whatever you, you've done, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I feel I, I could have a better year. I mean, I've worked harder than I did last year. Could you have a worse year? Can't be bad all year. <laughs> Jones will team with Kirk Carruthers on the inside, the former Butkus candidate, second on the team in tackles in 1990, and that was an off year. He's come back bigger, stronger, faster, and with a vengeance. I've worked harder than I ever have this summer. I've gained weight. Uh, it's a new Kirk Carruthers. Uh, I'm ready to play football, and I'm hungry, and uh, I want to get back out there and, uh, and prove myself again. Throw into the equation, Ken Alexander, the Tribe, runs a 5-2 defense, but in some formations you'll see number 36 replace a defensive end just to find a way to get all three of these linebackers on the field at the same time. The outside equally stacked, Reggie Freeman and Howard Dinkins hold down starting roles, but 6-foot-7-inch Sterling Palmer is ready and able. You know, we've got a lot of great players, and it's going to be hard trying to get, you know, most of us on the field, but I feel the coaching staff is going to devise a way to do that. Up front, the Ostazuski twins anchor the line. Nose guard James Chaney is the same type of physical player. Combine that with the finesse and speed of Simpson and Footman, and Ty Detmer could be in for a long evening. It gives us a chance to find out, you know, how good we are in certain areas, and it's going to give some of these people a uh, we'll find out real quick if, if uh, how Dan Footman's gonna gonna respond or react in that situation. 
Leon Fowler and John Davis get the nod at the safeties, both big hitters. But freshman Derek Brooks is playing his way up the depth chart, as is Steve Gilmer. On the corners, it's set. McCorvey and Buckley pair up. They started last year, you know, the defense and it's all this defensive special team set up a lot of score, a lot of touchdowns, so I don't see that being any different this year. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. Just in case Florida State doesn't get in the end zone, Scott Player will be called upon to kick it away. However, considering the talent level on this defense, it's likely most of the punting will be done by the opposition. Randy Rudix reporting from Florida State. Well, Brigham Young will really test you. It's going to test your pass defense uh, about as well as anybody can test it. Uh, they, they've got so many unknowns, I just really don't know what to think about them. They, they lost a lot of players. Tulane had some losses last year also, and uh, playing them in Tallahassee, I'd, I'd rather play them here than anywhere else. If you look at your schedule, there are probably five high points on there. And then the others, it's, it's being careful that you don't get upset, because it can sure happen. It happens every Saturday to somebody, and Western Michigan would fall in that category. <laughs> Michigan would be my vote for preseason uh, uh, number one. If I were to have to, when I, when I vote this year for the UPI, I will vote Michigan number one. The uh, main reason, they're, they're, they're two, biggest, two of their biggest games with Florida State and uh, Notre Dame are in Ann Arbor. They had them on the road, I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know that much about Syracuse yet, although they, their program is uh, uh, very healthy right now, and I expect them to bring a good ball club. I, but I think you have an advantage when you play another, a northern team in the south. There's, there's a couple of pitfalls on this schedule worse than any other else I see on there, and that's Virginia Tech and LSU. Virginia Tech nearly beat us last year. And they've got most of their kids coming back, too. And I, and I hear a lot of things about them from pros, uh, about Virginia Tech. They like their quarterback. They like that tackle that they got. And uh, that one could be a little scary. Well, we've asked uh, 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 Middle Tennessee to wear Auburn helmets, you know, try, try to fool our fans a little bit. But uh, that is the, uh, we're just glad that they were willing to substitute for us because we were, we were left with an open date. LSU at Baton Rouge, that's the other team I said, that is a, you're looking for trouble there now because they got everybody back and uh, new coach, new enthusiasm at Baton Rouge uh, and they're mad at you. After LSU comes Louisville up there and uh, Howard has got them uh, where they're not a doormat anymore. Louisville is for real. They had some, they had some good losses, but he's, he's been recruiting well. South Carolina. Uh, it's funny, that's been a school that we've had their number down through the years. There, you know, there have been certain schools, that maybe some schools that have, have had our number. We just hadn't been able to beat them. But here's one that's, that we've kind of had their number. I don't know why. I know in 87, you remember when we had we ran up down the field on Miami, and then they won, and we thought, losing all those kids, that we'd get them the next year, and they killed us. So uh, the program down there is strong enough that they reload every year. in their crawl and when they beat us that sticks in ours it's just a natural rivalry it's as good as any of the state rivalries in the country probably and so yes it uh it gets very serious uh when that game comes around coming up next an offense right out of tomorrow for cadillac lc 14 next r344 z band pay attention to your assignment 
It is the language of Florida State's future, a future so bright Bobby Bowden's got to wear shades. The offense only loses two starters from last year's unit. That bunch finished fifth in the nation in scoring. So... There shouldn't be no reason why we should come out and click if now we have better athletes than before. But the future of this offensive line still has question marks. For one thing, can Morris go at all? He broke his foot just two weeks ago, but vowed he would be back for the opener. Until then, redshirt freshman Patrick McNeil is practicing in his place next to All-American candidate Kevin Mancini. Center Robbie Baker's banged up as well. Off-season surgery on his right shoulder has stayed hurt. Reggie Dixon figures to be solid at the other guard, and Robert Stevenson can play anywhere. But the key is depth behind them. And behind that line, offensive coordinator Brad Scott has an interesting dilemma. Which weapons to use? More than anything else that maybe this offense has is the ability to hopefully to strike in a lot of areas. And a good place to start, a backfield some publications are calling the best in the country in the preseason. Big was that title right now, but the thing for us to do is to go out in game time and prove it. So I'll wait till then. As far as guys that can run the ball, come out of the backfield and catch the ball. The total group, I think this is probably the most diversified group. And Mr. Versatility among this versatile group is Junior Amp Lee. 825 yards on the ground, 360 more catching the ball last season, using a style that few in the country can match. Deceptive, I have to say. Um, I, I'm a slasher, I think. Uh, I'm not the fastest guy on the field. Um, I have good moves, quick feet, um, and I'm able to use my vision really well. And watch him change lanes. Look at that. Boom, one time. Boom, two times. Nobody early. It was touch football he'd be by these guys. Boom, three misses. Just trying to follow the amp is hard enough, so mm -hmm. I guess if you try to do what he does, he, you're working hard. But Jackson has shown he can get it done if called on, like this long run in the Seminoles' first scrimmage this preseason and with a couple of hundred-yard games in 1990. Now he's joined by the likes of Tiger McMillan and everybody's All-American Marquette Smith. And that's just the tailbacks. That's an exciting thing to think about, you know. Really an honor, you know, being part of a great team like Florida State. At fullback, well, they don't come much better. Edgar Bennett spurned the NFL, though he would have been eligible to come back this year. It gives me an opportunity to show that I'm number one and, you know, I'm going to help this team, you know, do whatever I can to help the team win that championship. Overall, the magazines have given their thumbs up to this group as potentially the best backfield ever at FSU. Emphasize potentially. I have to think back on that 87 group when we had Marion Butts and Victor Floyd and Sammy Smith and Dexter Carter. There's three starting in the NFL. We have a lot of talent in those young guys, but they haven't proven it yet. Two years ago, it was the receivers who were ultra deep. Now the Fab Four's lone survivor, Lawrence Dossie, is gone. And it's some big shoes to fill. When Dawson left, was, he left, you know, he took a lot with him, a lot part of our offense. But I think um, we've grown in experience. Fryer is fighting with Kez McCorvey for the split end spot, a sophomore and a freshman, while Shannon Baker or Eric Terrell figures to start at flanker. No seniors and no superstars, but a chance for the receivers to spread the wealth. With those type of guys, you know, it's easy for one guy each game to be on top. The talent's there. And uh, it's just now, you know, a couple of great catches and, and they'll be over the line, you know, like, like I was. The tight end position, total inexperience. And this was a battle right until the season opener to replace a duo that combined for 36 catches last season. Warren Hart, Marvin Farrell, and Lonnie Johnson all in the running. Each has different skills, but who could do it all? We've got some runners, we've got some hitters, we've got some guys that can catch the football. Mm -hmm. Now, can we do it all together? That has yet to be answered, as does this question. How will Dan Mowry respond to his first collegiate place kick? We'll find out about pressure soon enough. The opening on national television, and uh, you're following a little bit later uh, with some outstanding teams in Michigan up that way, plus they're moving the goalposts in a little bit on you, so there's a little bit of added pressure there. But those are the few question marks. The reality is... Expectations, um... I mean, they're really unlimited. We're going to have a very potent offense. This is going to be tough to stop us because we're going to keep the ball. We're going to air it out when we have to. We're going to run the ball when we have to. And uh, we can do both equally, as, equally well. The future is almost upon us with Florida State's offense. Don Evans reporting 